Hello, friends. Welcome to our wonderful, 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 wonderful topic of the power of prayer and how to pray effectively. And we've been drawing our inspiration from the essence of self-realization, the chapter of on how to pray effectively and also whispers from eternity. And we'll use both of those inspirations today. But I kind of wanted to start today just in kind of reassessing and making, not reassessing, but making clear of ways in which we can pray within our own lives. There is a wonderful YouTube video from Nayaswami Dhyana called Sowing the Seeds of Faith. And we've been talking about faith and that very important component in praying effectively. And in this conversation, she talks about many people coming to her with challenges and all of the things going wrong in their life. And often she would say, are you praying about it? Many people wouldn't even be praying about it. And so prayer is something that we should be bringing into every aspect of our lives. If we're challenged financially with jobs, with relationships, with habits, with all sorts of areas of our lives, family, friends, colleagues, uh, the state of the world, the state of the country, all of these things, we should be praying about them. But using all of the, the elements, all of the components that we've been talking about and praying and meditating together, but taking just these literally writing down, okay, I'm, I'm dealing with this habit, I'm dealing with this issue, I'm dealing with these challenges right now, I'm starting to really develop well in my meditation in this area, I'm going to pray that that deepens and continues. All of these different aspects, taking the time to write down and journal and figure out what we can be praying for, as well as meditating upon, praying and listening in meditation, that conversation with the divine. So really take away from this particular video that you should take a moment in your life to explore what to pray about. I'm gonna draw from a couple sections. I'm not gonna read the complete sections, but this is how to pray effectively, page 185 of the Essence of Self-Realization by Paramahansa Yogananda edited by uh, Swami Kriyananda, compiled and edited by Swami Kriyananda. So this is number four and five. I'll draw aspects from it. Pray with ecstasy. Meditate with ecstasy. And whenever you have a free moment, think of God. How should you love God? Love him as the miser loves money as the drowning man yearns for breath, as the desert wanderer craves water. Love him with the first love of true lovers. When you have learned to love him with all your heart, you will have him. You will then be a yogi, one who is united with God. Union with the cosmic beloved is the most enjoyable experience possible. It is dream after dream, joy after joy, a thousand million divine romances in one, ever thrilling your heart. In every point of space, you behold searchlights of his love, shining like a million suns. As often as you think you have exhausted his love, again and again, like a rolling surf, it crashes anew upon the shores of your mind. That is ecstasy. Ooh. <laughs> well, that kind of puts it into perspective. When we come home from work and we're ravenous for food, 
we're wondering what we need to do and all the chores that need doing and maybe the distractions and the demands and the responsibilities of children, parents, friends, family. We could watch the Netflix program, the movie, the show, all of these different things. We could just lay on the sofa. All of these things we've done at some point, haven't we? Uh, I have to say I've played my part in that. And there's moments when I dip into that. But look at this. Look at this opportunity. It is the most enjoyable experience. And as Master says, as Yogananda says, pray with ecstasy, meditate with ecstasy. Every chance you have, think of God. And so more and more we want to bring this into our lives, praying with ecstasy, praying with that love, praying with the expectancy that you will achieve those thrills that that relationship is a reality it's a true reality as i said a couple of videos ago i think two or three videos ago that what yogananda says really is truth and so if we really take this to heart it is dream after dream joy after joy a thousand million divine romances in one. Do we need any other inspiration to take the time to pray and meditate and to do these practices throughout our day? We need to develop the muscle and the habit of coming to our altar, coming to that moment in the traffic lights coming to that moment at break at work, coming to that moment when we've lost our center, when we've come home and we're exhausted, just to come at least, even just to pray a little bit, to really bring God into it, to really remind yourself, this is the most thrilling thing that we've ever experienced, more, a thousand million times more thrilling than what we're going through right now, or than what we've ever experienced. That is available to each one of us when we do this. And as Yogananda says, that we should pray like, or you know, love God like the miser love God, loves God. And he gives these examples. This wonderful book, Whispers from Eternity, has 217 answered prayers. They seem kind of randomly put, but within these 217 prayers, there are the right attitude to adopt for the spiritual seeker in all circumstances. This is what Master and Swami Kriyananda says. Now, I've not read all the prayers. I can't back it up with my own experience in this but I trust what they say. And here is Yogananda saying to us in the essence, love God like the miser loves money. And here is a prayer demand that Yogananda gives us that we can practice together. And it's a demand for further in divine, in divine love. So you can take this prayer and spiritualize it. You can churn the butter of the words of this prayer sorry, the, you churn the milk of this uh, prayer into the butter of inner realization of whatever these demands offer you. So this is demand for fervor in divine love. Teach me, O Spirit, to love thee as wholeheartedly as the miser loves money. Make me as attached to thee as the drunkard is addicted to wine. Teach me to cling to thee as erring ones do to their bad habits. Teach me to be as attentive to thee as a mother is to her child. Teach me to perform my duties diligently 
with my attention fully riveted on thee. Teach me to love thee as the worldly man loves his possessions. With the first love of true lovers, teach me to love thee. And so those words from essence can be internalized and made deeply spiritualized within your being through this whisper. It's whisper 82 on page 82 <laughs> on whispers from eternity. And at the beginning of this book is a guide in the hints to the reader and keys to the demand to really take that prayer deeply. But using, even if we just use what we've learned already, doing it with love, doing it as a child of God, doing it with faith that God is listening to us and praying again and again, intensely, fervently, over and over again, mixing it with meditation, trying to feel the words, trying to get beneath the words as much as possible. A wonderful prayer. Let's maybe just pray it together a couple times, closing the eyes, Teach me, O Spirit, to love thee as wholeheartedly as the miser loves money. So you can repeat this line mentally or outwardly, whatever works for you, I'll say it again. Teach me, O Spirit, to love thee as wholeheartedly as the miser loves money. Make me as attached to thee as the drunkard is attached addicted to wine. Teach me to cling to thee as erring ones do to their bad habits. Teach me to be as attentive to thee as a mother is to her child. Teach me to perform my duties diligently with my attention fully riveted on thee. Teach me to love thee as the worldly man loves his possessions. With the first love of true lovers, Teach me to love thee. And we'll do it once more, trying to feel it and visualize it and see it. Really feel that spirit, we're praying to spirit in this particular prayer demand. Try to feel that spirit is teaching you. Spirit is showing you, guiding you through your life's experience. So repeating after me mentally or out loud. Teach me, O oh Spirit, to love thee as wholeheartedly as the miser loves money. Make me as attached to thee as the drunkard is addicted to wine. Teach me to cling to thee as erring ones do to their bad habits. Teach me to be as attentive to thee as a mother is to her child. Teach me to perform my duties diligently with my attention fully riveted on thee. Teach me to love thee as the worldly man loves his possessions. With the first love of true lovers, teach me to love thee. There you go, friends. Well, thank you for joining me. 
I hope this encourage you, encourages you and inspires you to really build regular conversation with God, with prayer and meditation. God bless.